This current challenge is called a race introduction. To get you straight to the points, this challenge will get some inputs like this. So here we're going to get a number, it's going to be an integer, and this represents the parameter n for this challenge. n is going to range from 1 to 1000, and it corresponds to the number of integers that we will be given in the next line of inputs. So here we have 4, and then we have these 4 numbers separated by a space. This line of text here is going to be a string. So it's going to be our job to grab these numbers and then extract them as tokens to store them as ints or integer values in our program. These have to be saved in an array and then we need to display the array in reverse order. So this here, the integer 1 would be stored at index 0, this will be stored at index 1, and the value 3 will be stored at index 2, and the value 2 would be stored at index 3. So then we need to print the values in our array in reverse order. For this challenge, we need to write the entire code by ourselves. So here I've written even the headers myself. So this here is for inputs. This is the SS string. I'm going to use that to extract tokens from this line of text. Then I have a string here because like I said, this is a line of text and I need to accept all the values in a string variable. And this here is the limits header just because I want to ignore the characters at the end of my string. But you don't need to pay much attention to this here. And then here I have a function that I'm creating myself and it's called reverse array. So you can give this function any name that you want because you're writing your own program by yourself. But this function takes in two parameters. So the first one is going to be a pointer to an array and it has to be an int array. And this here is the size of the array. For those of you who are a bit familiar with C code instead of C++, you'll know that usually this is one common way of passing an array to a function. In C++, we tend to pass only a vector, for example, and then we can get the size of the vector by calling the dot size methods on the vector. Anyway, once we have our array here, I can loop through the entire array from the last index, which is size minus one, all the way to the first index, which is index zero. And at every iteration, I'm going to decrease my index to read the values in my array from the end of the array to the beginning. Because this is a single line of inputs, technically I could remove these brackets. And then now we have the main function. In the main function, I have an integer variable called n. This will be for the first line of inputs, which is an integer, and it's also for the size of the array. So here I get some inputs for n, then I ignore the rest of the characters in my stream. To make sure that the value of n matches the constraints, I verify here if the value of n is between 1 and 1000. I'm going to create an array of integers of size n. This is the i variable, and I'm going to use that to go through my array. Now I need to get the second line of inputs, so I'm getting this string variable here, and then here I'm getting the full line of inputs using the getLine function. Once I have my full line of inputs, which in this case is going to be 1432, I can have a num variable here, which I'm going to use to store the tokens when I extract every integer inside my string. So to extract the tokens, I'm going to use an input string stream object that I'm calling ISS and I'm passing it my string variable. So the string variable now would have 1432 as the value. Now I can have a while loop and I can say while I can extract a token from my string, I'm going to verify if that token, which would be an integer because num is of int type, I'm going to check first if the value of the token that I've extracted is between 1 and 10,000. And then I'm going to store the value of the token inside of the index i inside my array. And then here I increase the value of i. At the next iteration, I'm going to be at index 1, then index 2, and so on. Once I'm done getting all the values inside my array, I can simply call my reverse array function and then pass it my num array, which I created here at the beginning and then the size of the num array, which is n, which I created here. And then we got some inputs on line 16. So that's it. When I'm done, I can have return zero because the main function expects an int to be returned and zero means that everything works fine. I've already run the code here, but I'm going to run it again. We've passed the test case. So I'm going to submit this code. We have nine test cases and we've passed all of them. So that's it guys for this challenge. It was called arrays introduction. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, get the code on my GitHub, and I'll catch you next time.